What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote. And maybe you can have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Are you not entertained? Make your next thing a big one. Today on the program, I have Anushka Bhattacharji. Oh, you heard that name. Oh, you kind of know that name. You know a little bit about Anushka. Well, you're going to learn a little bit more in the next few minutes, so stick around. This week's shows, I have my one public show at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. The video dance party, karaoke jam. Yes, karaoke, you're the stars of the show. They got food, they got pool tables, and they got you. All you got to do is come on out, and you could be one of the stars of the show at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the AM. All right, that's enough intro for this podcast. Let's get into it with Anushka Bhattacharji. Now, I got her on Skype, so if you're listening to the audio version, I encourage you to check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash keys Dan. All right, Skyping Anushka Bhattacharji now. Anushka Bhattacharji. Tell me I yeah. said that right. That's how you say it. Fantastic. This is Keys Dan. You can call me Dan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. This is so fantastic. You know what I really appreciate? And I don't do a lot of research on these things. Uh, your mom, Priya, she sent me uh, a sample, the first couple of chapters of your book, which is amazing. And uh, I, I don't read all that often. You, however, read a lot. But as I was looking up your name, I found a YouTube version of it. And uh, somebody read the chapters to me in six and a half minutes or so. Who was the who was that that was reading on the YouTube page? <laughs> that was me. That was you reading your own story to me. You read me a story. I love that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. How, how old are you? I'm nine right now, but I wrote my first book when I was eight. How do you write a first book when you're eight? Okay, I already read your bio, but tell tell people about you because uh, you were. Where were you born? Arkansas. I'm in Arkansas. I'm in Conway, Arkansas. Um, Where are you from? What exactly in Arkansas? Where? Uh, I have you no were, idea, actually. You were born in Bentonville. Okay, Bentonville. Bentonville. Okay. From what I'm un from what I'm guessing, you didn't spend a lot of time in Arkansas. See, I'm from I'm from Miami. I spent my whole life down there, but I realized I recently. Uh, came to Arkansas just a well, man, maybe it's now ten years, ten years ago. But you were born in Arkansas, and then when did you leave? I left when I was like I, one or something like that, because I have absolutely no right like memory of Arkansas. But you have an Arkansas connection, and I think some of my listeners will really appreciate that because uh, I have a lot of lo local listeners here, but then I have listeners all over the world as well that are learning about you, Anishka. And I, I want to call you Anishka. May I call you Anishka? Yeah. Like, what else would you call me? <laughs> well, I mean, Miss Batacharji, that, I, that, you know, you, I, we could be formal. <laughs> So, but you're still a, a young miss and uh, you're an author, which gives you, you know, a lot of power. What you did when you wrote this book, you made imaginations go wild with your imagination. You wrote it down and now other children and maybe even other not so much children like myself will be reading this book and our imagines, imaginations will go wild. Now, even in those those first couple of chapters, I realize it's a book about moving. So that leads me to believe, is it a little bit about you? Yeah, so like this book, it's like it's a lot about, like the starting is a lot about me. Um, not about me moving from Arkansas, it's me moving from Dallas to Canada. 
but I, I realized that the the uh, person, the character, the main character, she moves from another place with an AR. What, where is that from? Arizona, because I thought like when I was like younger, I mixed up Arkansas and Arizona a lot. So like when I was younger, I thought I was born in Arizona. You know, you would be perfect uh, working for the post office. You might have a, a, a career in the future as a postal worker because a lot of times the AK and the AR really do get mixed up quite a bit. So we'll get mail from Arizona when it's supposed to go to Arkansas and vice versa. And for some, well, I, I, I maybe, maybe not so much because AK, you could probably mix that up with Alaska. Wait a minute. What is Arkansas? Is it AK? Is it AR? What is Arkansas? And what is Arizona? AZ. That's right. AZ. I'm just now remembering. <laughs> I'm so silly. All right. So you went from Arkansas to Texas. Well, I mean, did you move all by yourself? I mean, did you move on your own? You said, I got to get out of the house. No. Uh, Who'd you move no. with? Um, my parents. Oh, okay. Well, where do you remember about Texas? Um, mostly my friends and my school. Was it hard to leave your friends in your school? Yes. It seems like it. You know, I didn't move all that much, but the times that I did move, I had to change schools when I was a little, little boy. And I remember moving uh, from sixth grade to seventh grade. I moved cities and I could, that you're, your story touched me. It really made me have the feels because I had to leave all my friends behind in Miami. And when I moved to Fort Lauderdale, how did you feel when you when you left your friends? I felt like really sad, and also because like I don't really make friends that often. Mm. Well, it seems like you're a very friendly person. I see your smiley face, and that's a good thing. Whenever you meet somebody, you give them a smile. And that's a good way to break the ice. How, when you when you meet somebody new, what's the first thing? Like, say you you meet a kid, uh, somebody your age, eight eight years old, nine years old, uh, at your school, and you you see somebody, and maybe they're doing something interesting. Well, what do you do to break the ice when you want to meet somebody? Uh, ask them if they have like an annoying sibling. <laughs> Wait a minute. I've seen a sibling in the pictures of you on your author page. Hmm. You have an annoying sibling? No, you have a great sibling. She's annoying, but kind of great. Okay. Well, you know, what's nice about having a sister is that you automatically have a best friend or somebody that's going to back you up for the rest of your life. I have a little brother. Yes, we got into fights quite a bit. I was the oldest, just like you. You're the oldest, right? Then did your parents blame you for things your, your brother did? Yes. Yes, they did. And a lot of times I got in trouble for things that he did. Uh, you know, and uh, sometimes we got in fights. And because we're boys, you know, our, uh, my mom really didn't know how to, to handle us. So sometimes her solution was to say, go outside, fight it out, get, get over this. And then come back in because it's almost time for dinner. Now, when you and your when you you and your sister fight, what happens? Uh, sometimes I punch her and then she punches me and then it kind of happens, and vice versa. And my parents come in eventually and tell us to stop. Wait a minute! There's actually fisticuffs. There's fights. <laughs> There's knockdown, drag out fights. That's not good. Your girls. <laughs> You're made of sugar and spice and everything nice. Girls don't fight. <laughs> Girls do fight. <laughs> Girls can do whatever they want. And they do fight sometimes. Okay. Well, hopefully there's some good times. What happens when you're when you're getting along with your sister? What kind of activities do you do together? Uh, uh, me and my sister have a race. I like a good race. Speed a book fastest, a race to ride the bike fastest. I always win that, but it was counting. See, I like the competitions. Okay, you're nine years old. How old is your sister? Six. 
okay, she's got, you know, reading skills at six years old. And from what I'm understanding, she's following in your footsteps as well. Yeah, she, like, she wrote this book. Wow. It's, a, it's kind of in between a chapter and a picture book. Like, you can't really see the pictures from the inside of it, but there's one. Yeah. I can see the pictures very well. Who illustrated that book? My sister. She did the drawings in that book. Okay, this is a very talented family. I got to know, what, what is it that, that Miss Priya, your mom, does? Uh, she's a software worker with black counts, but, like, I actually doubted she could read a book, like, until I was, like, five or something. I, I'm, like, not a reader and not a writer, but I don't know how she became, like, a like an both avid reader. Yeah, both, of, both my girls are both of them. So I don't know how that happened, though. Well, for the people that are listening to the audio version, that's uh, uh, Anushka's mom, Priyanka Das, and she just joined in. And uh, you say, Priyanka, you do software? Yeah, I, like I, I'm, I work in software, like in IT industry. That's fantastic. See, that takes a little bit of talent, a little bit of creativity. Maybe that's the, the gene that was passed on. And what about uh, Anushka's father? Uh, what, what kind of stuff does he get into? He, he does the same as me. Yeah. So we both are in a totally different world than what our kids are. All right. Well, how did you have such an intellectual child that uh, reads and has a thirst for knowledge? Uh, when was the first? Okay. My first book, when I, and this is, I guess I was four or five years old. I was really getting into reading. And yes, back, back when I was your age, I was a reader. Uh, the first book I read was The Wizard of Oz, and it was 300 pages. And I thought, wow. I read a 300-page book. Now, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the first book that I read. I'm sure it was Cat in the Hat or something like that. You know, One Fish, Two Fish, Green Fish, Blue Fish, something something of, along that line. But the first real book with a lot of pages and a lot of chapters was The Wizard of Oz. Now, what was the first real book that you read? Uh, I honestly do not have an idea. No, like... I remember, like, I started reading chapter books when I was, like, four or five because before that, like, no one would even give me a chapter book, and I don't even, I didn't even know I wanted a chapter book. When did you start Harry Potter? Like, when I was seven. Any other books in the book? Rings of Fire? Okay. Well, Anushka, this... This is primarily a learning podcast. I like to learn from people. This is why I like to have conversations. And I'm learning from you, Anishka. I'm learning that kids, you know, can be taught at early ages to do amazing things. And one of those things is learning how to how to be an author, how to write a story, how to read a not just to read a book, but also how to write a book. But before that, you had a teacher that was teaching you how to read. Who was it that taught you how to read at first? Was me, I guess. Okay, my mom taught me. Like, okay. But I used to like take her to libraries when she was really little, like like little, like in like two years old or so. And she loved like she couldn't read obviously at like two, but she would like go through she just had this love for books. So yeah, but then yeah, I'll well, use the too and yeah, I well, for the parents, for the parents that are listening in, I love libraries. And there's uh, story time. There's times when when they'll have somebody get up at the front and read, and maybe they'll hold the book uh, and show them as they're reading, and show the the kids. Maybe the kids cannot read. They'll see a bunch of lines and circles on a page, and those eventually become letters and numbers, and then they start to form words. Now, when you're reading, were you? Did you read to to uh, Anushka every night, Miss Priya? No, I, and I never had to because she used to like just take. So, um, uh, one suggestion which I give to all the parents whose kids are just starting to read is go for the Bob books. That really worked for Anushka and also her sister. So I think um, you get like a lot of Bob books in the libraries, and that is what like Anushka just started reading all by herself. I really never had to kind of read anything to her. And she started reading, like, before she was three, like, those Bob books. Okay. Yeah, so that is a really good uh, resource for all the parents who are listening and who want their kids to start reading. 
Well, I'm definitely going to put that on the on the list of things to <laughs> to uh, advise parents to read to their children. What do you remember about the Bob books, Anushka? I remember that they were always put in a case, and they never yeah. really had you a plot that? to them. But you could read. That's how you learned. Yeah, but they didn't have a plot to them, so. Like, right now, I don't think I ever want to read a Rob book again. Oh, my goodness. She's such an author. It didn't have a plot. Oh, the story was, oh, it was just horrible. It was like watching watching a movie. I like the book like, so much better. It's like, I have a cat. I have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> These are the basics. These are the basics. This is what you need to learn. You got to, to take a little bit of, of, of water before you can get, I don't know, you, you got to learn to walk before you run. Pick, pick a, an, an analogy. Hey, maybe you have a better analogy since you're the author. Uh, what would you have to do as a child before you can do something else? Children learning their ABCs should not be writing a letter to the president. <laughs> <laughs> that was well said, Anushka. Well said. Much better than me. Much better than me. Yes. You have a way of word a way with words. You're a wordsmith. And, and you know, I have never written a book. I'm fifty three years old. I have never written a book. I have talked a lot into microphones, and if anybody's transcribed all the stuff that I said into microphones, I'd probably have a novel. A long, <laughs> long novel. But I have not written much, much down. But you have. And you are so far ahead of the game. What made you want to come up with a story? All right. You already told me it's a story about you possibly, you know, kind of semi-biographical about you moving from Texas to where are you, in, where are you now? I'm in Canada, Oshawa, which is like really, really near to Toronto. But it's. It's really, really different. Oh, my goodness. You went from a place where they play maybe a lot of football, maybe a lot of outdoor sports, maybe a lot of uh, uh, warm weather sports, uh, you know, warm weather activities, go outside and play, to a place that for somebody like me who's never been there, it feels like it's ice all the time, ice and hockey. That's, like, that's what my parents say, like, it was in the, like it was fall, and my dad like this is deep winter, so you need to wear snow pants, a jacket, a hat, and gloves. <laughs> Even moving from Florida, where the sun is always shining, okay, it really it rains a lot down there. But when the, you know, for me, the sun was always it was always eighty degrees or so. And moving into the middle of the country into Arkansas, you know, it's still too cold. It gets snow here. Do you like snow? Honestly, like, I remember once, like, in Texas, it was, like, very, very light snowing, and, like, the teachers wouldn't let us out, even because it was snowing, and it was, like, snowing one centimeter, and right now, like, like, in the winter, our school, like, had this entire mountain of snow. We were still allowed to go outside. The field was literally covered in ice. It's amazing what humans can adapt to. And you know, in that sentence, you let me know something. You went from inches to centimeters. Now that you're in Canada, now Canada ha is a very interesting place. I think the uh, United States is probably one of the last places that still uses uh, inches and feet. And you're, you are in Canada where because they're so close to the United States, they have to be somewhere in between the metric system and the, uh, and I, I, what is it, the king system? Or where, what is it that, that they call the inches? It's, the name is eluding me now. But anyway, but you're, you're in the metric system now, right? Yeah. So you measure things in centimeters and meters. Yeah, but, like, sometimes, like, in Canada, you're supposed to write, like, centimeters and meters, like, M-E-T-R-E-S. Most of the time, I still write M-E-T-E-R-S. Yes, that is very confusing, going from the Queen's English to American English. Uh, yes, the R and the E sometimes does get transposed. And the word encyclopedia always was funny with the, when they had a, an A jammed in there, uh, the A-E that was kind of jammed in to, together. Have you read any encyclopedias? Uh, like, we have a science book at home. And it's equivalent to an encyclopedia, 
but I haven't actually read an encyclopedia. Well, See, that sounded interesting, though. Well, growing up in the 1970s, yes, that's way back in the 1900s. That's ancient history for you. But when I was growing up as a little boy, your age, my uh, mother and father, they bought a, a, a set of encyclopedias. Now, a set of encyclopedias is the Internet before the Internet. So when I wanted to find something out for a book report, I had to crack open a book. If I want to learn about frogs, I would go to the shelf and find the F encyclopedia look in it, go to the page, and find frogs. And then, because I wasn't so creative, I would pretty much copy everything that was from top to bottom out of the encyclopedia onto a paper and put my name on it and hand it in and not very, not get a very, very good grade. No. Yeah. Now, when you're, when you're researching for a report, what do you do? Go on the Internet. Books are old history in our school. You go on the internet and Google it up. Yeah, you like use websites. So you were saying, Grandpa, what's the what's a book? <laughs> no, I mean, like literally, not a lot of people in my class use books as the research like, thing. Well, there you go. As a young person in school, are you in public school? Yeah. Okay, in school, do you? have iPads or do you use computers instead of taking notes on paper? Yeah, like we have six computers that belong to our class alone, which is like great. Now, does everybody have their own computer when they're taking notes? No, usually you need to borrow. Like there's only six computers in the class, so usually we need to borrow them. But like you're allowed to bring your own computer in, which I did like twice. Now, ideally, everyone would have their own computer, I guess, in a in a perfect world, because, you know, when I was a kid, computers were just coming out. Uh, we had Apple computers. We were learning how to program computers, and I thought that was the greatest thing. So at, at a very young age, maybe just a little bit older than you, I was learning how to program computers in the language that they were using at the time. You know, but you, at this age, you're already using computers so you're so far ahead of me but when you when you write a book do you write it out on a piece of paper or do you write it uh, in a computer i like writing it the whole book out on a piece of paper and then rewriting it onto uh like on a computer kind of sounds really tedious so i just write it on a computer oh. once i tried writing it on paper first like as a rough draft I wrote one whole page before I'm like, no, this is too hard. I went back to the computer. Well, I mean, as a young person, uh, do you? I, I I know that some curriculums they don't even teach people how to how to do cursive anymore. Yeah, so my mom had to teach me, and she's also teaching my sister now. So, what did you think about writing in cursive and writing in print? Uh, you, how, how, how do you feel about it? Is it a waste of time, or is there some merit to it? Well, writing in cursive, like, my mom says it's more, like, faster, like, if you know how to do it really well, which I don't. I think I prefer writing in normal English. Well, that's good. I mean, hey, you're, you're learning a skill that some people may not have in the future. You might have this skill of uh, writing in cursive. I remember calligraphy, when people are writing in, in, in calligraphy, like, uh, like for invitations and such, that was such a skill that was a lost art. You know, people, uh, you know, when you write those letters that are real fancy, when you have to have a special pen that has a flat uh, edge on it to write in calligraphy. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, so, I, I'm, I'm so impressed that you even wrote a book but the, and, and that there's actual, there's an actual story to it. It's not just the cat sat on the bat because he was fat. <laughs> so have you did you ever read um uh alice in wonderland yeah it's like kind of confusing at parts but i like it okay what was the inspiration for your magic mirror well definitely it was some of those like really really big fantasy books like i definitely say harry potter and like wings of fire is among them and yeah 
So have you read all the Harry Potters? Yeah, and my sister, she's like currently get been given a book by her um her teacher. Um it's the seventh Harry Potter book. She wow. Read. Now did you did you watch all the movies as well? No, we've only watched the first four and then like my dad's like, Okay, yeah, the fifth, sixth, and seventh are like way too scary for you. There's very it's very violent. I read the book. That's I already very- know all the violent stuff. Well, the violence is in your imagination. And sometimes when a director gets involved and a writer, a screenwriter gets involved, sometimes you have to deal with their imagination. And your imagination is always better than their imagination because you have it in your own head. And I think that's, that's a wonderful thing to have it in your head. Now, I, ha- I have a daughter. My, I have two daughters. One is, is much older, but I have a daughter who's a teenager now. And she read all the Harry Potter books, and she could only watch a piece of the first movie because of Harry Potter's eyes. Oh, yeah. What's different about Harry Potter's eyes in the movies than in the book? His eyes aren't green. His eyes aren't what? Green. Green. Every single, like, you have your mother's eyes, they're the exact same shape and they're exact same color green. She could not watch the movies because his eyes were not were green. That and I so in turn I haven't watched the movies. Oh well, I missed out. But here we here we have a story of, that you made up about a magic mirror. And do you want to expand on that? I know that you're writing another book. Is that second book going to be another uh, like an extenuation of the magic mirror? Or is there more to it, more to more to your imagination that's going out to the world? I've actually wrote, like, another book. It's just a proof copy. It's not related to my magic career, but, um, like, it's kind of long-ish. It's like 20,000 words. <laughs> yeah, and so it's not related to my magic career, but I got the manuscript ready for, uh, my, like, the sequel to my magic career. Um but my mom needs time because she needs to publish these two books. So I'm still waiting. Are you sure you're nine years old? Because you're talking like a, an adult with the manuscripts and you have to get published. You know, these are these are gigantic words for a nine year old. OK, are you sure you're nine? I think you're I think you might be much, much older. Uh, I have a certificate i can like show you (laughs) (laughs) that's not necessary i believe you i was just having some fun no i i appreciate you so much my goodness but uh you know what's your favorite thing to do in school what's your favorite subject definitely silent reading silent reading actually no french is also kind of good except like except for the part where i kind of suck at it wait what part what is it what what's the other one French, like I like the teacher, and I kind of like learning the subject. I got like a range of B pluses to B minuses in French. I don't think I got one A. Well, <laughs> being in Canada, parts of Canada, uh, having French in your background or in your in your basket of uh, of of um, of th- of uh, what is it? Your tools in your toolbox. Having French is a good thing. Uh, what's the What's one thing you could say in French very well? Je m'appelle Anushka. It's the first thing I learned. And what does that mean? My name is Anushka. It is Anushka. Batacharji. <laughs> I'm, I'm making sure that I remember that name. Anushka Batacharji. And when people look up that name, they're going to find you everywhere. You, there's, there is so much, uh, the, so much promotion. Who, who's taking care of your publicity? Are you on social media all by yourself? Wait a minute. Somebody has to be taking care of that. Who's doing it? My mom is like, she got like everything, like all the like marketing. And we're like, she got like a lot of like, She's doing a Kickstarter right now for like our books, and so far it's been going pretty well. Well, fantastic! Are you self-publishing your books, or you have? Do you have a uh, publisher that you're going with? Uh, we 
we have a self publisher because like like you're doing it through Amazon. Yeah, we're doing it through Amazon because my mom like for the for this book, she looked up all of the like the publishers and they were all saying it's it's okay, I'll publish your book. Just give me ten thousand dollars. No biggie. <laughs> you know, in the good old days they used to give you ten thousand dollars to go write a book. And what happened? What happened to the industry? I'm glad that there's a the uh, in your time. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, back in the 1900s. That's ancient history. <laughs> what do you know about the 1900s? Who who was the uh, the first uh, uh, who's the first president that you remember? George Washington. Wait a minute. Were you around when George Washington was was alive? No, but like he's the first president I've ever heard of. That's true. I didn't make the question clear. When you're in your lifetime, uh, do you remember what president what was uh, around? Oh, Barack Obama. Obama. Yeah. Okay. And now in Canada, who's the who's the president? There's no president. There's a prime minister. Ah, you got me. Who's the prime minister? <laughs> uh, Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau. How's he doing? Good. Yay! <laughs> yes. I, uh, I think. I think. A copy of my first book. What's that? We sent him a copy of. My first book. Wow. So I'm not sure how that's going to go, but. Wow. Well, we wait with bated breath for an answer and to see how he enjoyed your book. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm so impressed. So impressed with you and your sister and your mom and your dad, even though I haven't met him because he, he loves you too, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like for the, all the events we go to, he's the one who gets us all the pizza and drives us, us there. It's good to have dads. It's good to have dads that bring pizza and drives. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. No, it's so fantastic. Thank you so much. I don't want to take too much of your time, but my goodness, I, I could talk to you all night long. I really could uh, about uh, stories and and about your imagination and about how how many uh, how many books do you think that you will write in your lifetime? Do you think this is a a pursuit, something that you want to study how to write? Is it? Are you already set in your career for your whole life? Do you have other interests? Like, I'm not sure, like, I want to be an author, and I've got, like, a few, like, more, I'm in progress of a few more manuscripts. I also want to do something that's related to STEM, and I want to be a speed skater. Okay. Just, For people that don't know who, what STEM is, what is STEM? Science, technology, engineering, and math. Although there's talking about, like, something called STEAM, which they added art. I like that because you need art, even in, in engineering. It, it all mixes together in math and technology and, and science. It all mixes together. It's so, so beautiful. I love the acronym, acronym of STEM and STEAM. I like STEAM even better. But I'm so impressed that you even know and, and even want to go through, uh, you know, and become an academic in that. Oh, I think I saw your dad. I think I saw okay. your dad. I think I saw your dad. Uh, for the people that are listening to the audio version, they will never have known that your dad opened the door and <laughs> and showed up in this podcast. I appreciate I appreciate him. I appreciate Priyanka uh, so much uh, for for uh, for being a part of this. I love your smiley faces. That's the best part is when you meet and I people. Mention she does a lot of events and a part of her uh, proceeds go to different. Um, a non-profit organization yeah so like it. yeah like you we usually donate like part of the proceeds to like like a few of them are like um durham children's aid association um i think it was sick kids um and the autism home. yeah and like a lot of others yeah so. Well, these are good lessons that people are learning from you is once you get to a certain level and you have enough to take care of yourself, you try to take care of other people. That's what you need to do in this world, in this life. Don't, don't you know, make sure that you're, you're in order. You know, you get yourself, your mental health, your, your body, your, your soul, your, you know, whatever it takes to get you in order. And then you go help somebody else. Anushka, you're so far ahead of the game. That is beautiful. 
That is fantastic. Now, are there any shout-outs you have to give? Any people that have helped you along the way uh, as you've been writing these books and writing and writing? Just like uh, you write like An- Alexander Hamilton. If you ever uh, saw a part, there's a part of the, uh, of, the, of the Alexander Hamilton story where he writes and writes and writes and writes and writs. And that's what you do. You've been writing. Whatever thoughts are in your head, I encourage you to write them down or, or at least type them down in your computer. But uh, She was writing right before the show. Like after she came back from school, she had a, her had her dinner and then she was writing. So I can totally Well, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I want you to get off this program and, and write if you want to. But, you know, take some time out as well to have some fun as a kid. And don't pick on your sister too much, okay? She's counting on you. You're the one that's teaching her. You're the older sister. You have to make sure that she's protected always. 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 Forever. Oh, my goodness. She'll always be your little sister. Huh. But, uh, okay. Uh, I, are there any shout-outs you have to give people that have helped you along the way uh, when you're in your endeavors? Uh, definitely, like, the first shout-out comes to my mom. Um, she helped publish it. She's with the marketing and everything. Um, and then I want to take like a, a few, two other authors. Um, their names are Kyle and Mark Cunning, um, mainly because they're very nice people and their books are like amazing. Well, say, you know? those, say those names again a little bit louder so it comes through. Mike Doyle and Mark Gunning. Perfect. Perfect. All right. I don't want this to be the last time that we talk. I, as things progress, as, as you write more things or, or more things happen in your life over, the, over time, I invite you to come back. But I always finish these things off with last words for the people. This could be words to live by, something that you heard a long time ago, or just whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. Anushka Batacharji, last words for the people. Always trust your mom <laughs> to help you. <laughs> that is great oh, and advice. Your dad, and your dad still help you too. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I want does. you to. I want you to say that whole thing over again. Okay. Always trust your parents because they're gonna help you by getting pizza and publishing your books. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Wasn't that wonderful, Anushka Batacharji? Such a smart girl. Oh, my goodness. So lovely. I was oh, so impressed. And just writing, writing. Every, every idea, every thought, every piece of imagination, it gets written down for you, for the world, for you to, to see, for you to have a, a better imagination. You get to, her words will live on in her books forever and ever and just, help oh my goodness help children to develop their own imaginations that's a wonderful thing that an author can do and you're anushka you're so far ahead of the game that is beautiful and i give it up to your mom and dad for cultivating that love uh for writing and helping you in those endeavors you know priyanka especially being your your manager you know your your momager making sure that that you uh are well taken care of and and making sure that that the books, hey, they, they get the um, they get what they deserve. They get the credit that they deserve. They get the the viewership, the listenership, the readership that they deserve. Thanks to hey, and, and you said it right at the end. Uh, you know, trust your mom and dad, your, your parents for sure. And, and dad, dad brings pizza and he drives you to places. That's cool. Dads are cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for being a a part of the What Makes You Famous podcast that's it for this edition of what makes you famous and now if you yes you uh, if you'd like to tell your story i encourage you to give me a call 501-470-6386 or email info oh wait a new email keysdan at aol.com that's it for me it's keysdan radio what.com dj little little rock.com peace i'm out of here